Favorite restaurant? Bogies. <laughs> I prefer to eat at Birdies, but, but uh, I'm not welcome there. <laughs> <laughs> Today's another 36 hole day. We've got tide water here this morning and then we're gonna head over to the Barefoot Resort. We're gonna play the love course. But early tea time is the earliest of the week, 7.30. And the one thing that really stood out about this place is here, a unique thing is that all the holes have their own name, their own story, it's very unique. And at Tidewater, they start you off on the first hole uh, with a hole they call the Big Easy. And the Big Easy, uh, I guess they call it that because it seems like an easy hole. It's a par five, it's short. Uh, the goal here was get a good drive out there in the middle of the fairway. And then let's see, who knows? An easy par five, that could be a recipe for an early birdie. And early birdies usually lead to a pretty good score. Two guys on the green, maybe? He's got an arm up. That looks good. I'm gonna have two eagle putts. Let's go. That's how you start it. Big easy. Let's go. Dude, no! 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 All right, short par five, two birdies on the card. That's why they call it the Big Easy. Sure, sure sets a nice vibe for the rest of the course. Let's see. I guess it can only get harder from here. Not bad, huh? That's pretty sweet. Fly over the hole, that that's cool, hole. yeah. So as always, it feels great working with FootJoy on these travel series and I couldn't be more thankful for them hooking us up with a lot of really great gear. Not only some of the shoes, because we were doing 36 holes a day most days, you gotta be comfortable, but we had some unseasonably cold mornings here. In fact, a lot of the local guys were kind of complaining about how chilly it was. Some of these mornings starting off at 50 or lower, so it's nice to have a couple of layers out there with us and be comfortable. But as the days moved on, it warmed up really nicely. Oh, dunk in there. That was a good line. Surprised it was slow down the hill, but it actually comes back up. It comes back, it comes up, back up. I feel that, yeah. Yeah. The par three third hole, when you approach that tee box, it's the first time those water views come into play. It's hard not to get caught staring at the beauty of Cherry Grove, but you better quickly turn your attention to one of the day's more difficult tee shots. I'll tell you where that pin is, is a, is a really tricky little spot. There's not a lot of room to land it, front right. or back. And if you try to be safe and bail out to the back, you're putting all the way down. Wow, a lot to think about. Try not to think about any of it. Oh, he's going at it. Don't be too left. Left is terrible. Oh, see what I mean? Yep. Let's hope that stayed up. Yeah, let's hope. The hole is named Stranded, and that may be the way you feel depending upon how you hit the ball off this tee. Because when that flag is down low, the area you're trying to hit into is small and that green kind of cants toward the marshy waters of Cherry Grove. So it is an unforgettable golf hole, and it's short, but potentially deadly. Stay on this green. Up and down from the marsh, no. Oh would have been something else. I think a good word to describe hole four would be intimidating because on the left side, it's waste. It's the Cherry Grove intercoastal water. It's all dead zone. So Frank, I think he said to me, he saw me lining up down. I usually line up left because I play that fade. He said, if you don't fade it, you're dead. And I just had that in my head, but you know, I, I just put a good swing on it. I was really happy with the swing. I just started it way left. And I ended up down in this little waste area and I was scared to death because I didn't think I was gonna get this ball back at all. And here I'm thinking, are we going on the triple bogey train early? Yes. <laughs> now that's something I'll hang my hat on, I think is one of the best pars of the trip by far. Par the hardest hole. Wow. What a, what a par. Which interesting is, I don't know, maybe that started something, but later on in this round, in a few more holes, I start to go on an incredible par streak. So just wait for that. It's, it's gonna be pretty fun. Nope. Oh. 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 You're right. Took that one off the kneecap. Did it hit knee -cap? you? Yeah. I would've never thought that would've hit. Oh. I don't know where the ball went. It's over there. I just ducked. Well, I knew it would happen eventually. I just didn't think it would happen from being five feet away from it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would have never thought in a million years. Well, that was for no reason. Poor Zach getting hit. That wasn't Mike's ball. His real ball is here. Oh, sh they hit him again. I don't know what my problem is with this sh dirt. Good roll. Hole six. Definitely was toying with the idea of going with less driver here. Try to take that water out of play, but the good news is it's not super tight. There is room out on the right side, so you can still hit a driver. You just have to take a smart line off the tee. Don't do the dumb thing and go driver right on the left side and end up in that drink. Look how far I stayed away from the water. Sit down. Good ball. Thanks. This guy's once again the turtle whisperer. Why do they all come to you? You got something on you they want? I think they just like my vibe. Maybe. You got a turtle vibe? <laughs> oh! Come on! <laughs> What's with this green? Robbery. Hole seven is definitely a teaser. 280 yards on the card. Uh, playing a little bit longer for us because we're into the wind and it's uphill a bit. But if you feel like you can reach with driver, all I can say is just back off a little bit. You've got an elevated green there. It's best to be able to have a wedge shot into this green. Uh, it's a tricky one, but it's one that you, you want to kind of get after it there and get as close to the green as possible. Remember, the closer you get, the closer you get to those big, gnarly green side bunkers. All right, I had seven iron in my hand. I don't think that's a smart play, but something about me, I'm just more confident in my green side sand game than my 80 yard wedge game. So I'm gonna try to fly this thing as far as I can. If I'm in that bunker, so be it. It's a good drive. You're gonna be, if anything, left of the bunker, right? Uh, actually, you might tuck it up nicely right up to right the Right in front of it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like at it, I like at it. Oh. The par 5-8 hole, you're gonna have a chance here. This is a hole you can make birdie on. It's not super long, but be careful on your second shot. This is a hole, again, length isn't the issue, but it tightens up as it gets closer to the green. So the more aggressive you try to be, the more you run the risk of bringing the, the marshy waters of the intercoastal on the left into play. So pay attention to the scorecard here and play smart. Get there, get there. Good All right, I'll take a par from the hazard area. Get there. Sneak it <laughs> I step up to the ninth tee box, I add up the score. Here we go. I don't know why. I shouldn't do this, but I did. So I noticed that if I do make par, I will card a 39 on the front nine. Now guys, I'm around a 12 handicap, you know, 10, 11, 12 in that ballpark. I think it's like an 11, eight officially. But for me to, you know, 39s, they don't come around too often. I don't see many three handles on the scorecard after nine. It's usually 41s, 42s, 43s, things like that. So the game plan was you make par, you get your 39. Maybe birdie, yes! Yes, <laughs> dude. Great job. Oh, yeah. Missed the hand high five. That's all right. Still, that's all right. Still. Dude, hats off to Frank for that birdie. I mean, that was incredible. Long birdie. Uh, it kind of got us juiced up to head into the uh, back nine. But hey, I'm happy with the par. 39, baby. That's my best nine of the trip. You know, it's days like today when everything is firing in your golf game and you feel good. It's, it's those days that you're actually stoked you're playing 36 because you're hoping that it's just gonna transition through the rest of the day. So we have that other 18 afterwards. I'm not even really thinking about that, but I just am excited that finally uh, I got this momentum going into that second round of the day. Ooh, a little just hot. off the bat. A little bit. Get that birdie, get that birdie. <laughs> So on this hole, I'm thinking I can possibly make my fifth par in a row. This was that par streak that I was talking about. Uh, and yeah, I was feeling good. I mean, I don't know what went wrong, but that hole was on a very cruel slope. Uh, just couldn't get the par down. So the par train officially ended on 11, uh, but there's some more coming. Stay up there. 
So as you as you get into the heart of the back nine, number 12 is when Cherry Grove comes back into view. Again, a peninsula green that plays out into the water. This is a shot that you will not forget. When the prevailing wind is coming off the Atlantic Ocean, which is just literally a mile away, this is not an easy golf shot. We are both wimps. Yeah, no one wants to go towards But we're that. gonna be wimps with pars. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Now it's gotta do this. So oh, it, not it bad. straightens out, not bad. You need more speed, I think. Actually, that's gonna cozy up well. Hold on. Look at me thinking he needed <laughs> more speed. All right, so what do we need to know about Tidewater today? Uh, Tidewater's in great shape. Fast greens, well bunkered. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful golf course. Here on uh, 13, if you look out to your right, you'll see the uh, Cherry Grove Inlet. This time of day, just you'll be out there with your camera taking pictures. I gotta read this sign, it's funny. Ocean Isle, it says a strong breeze can make this tricky par five your friend or keep you up all night wondering where you went wrong. <laughs> There's two ways yeah, this all can go. 13 at Tidewater is a gettable par five. You wanna be a little careful off the tee. Again, the fairway cants from left to right toward the waters of Cherry Grove. but get off the tee and play it smart. If you wanna go for it, fire away. Okay, sit in that green side bunker. Wind really, really sailed it to the right, didn't it? A little bit, yep. Looks like it's in that long, it's gonna be a long bunker shot. Mm -hmm. The strength and the defense of this hole is in one of the day's most undulating greens. So you need to make sure you're in the right spot. Oh. oh, hole 14 is a really tricky one. It's 400 yards, but what makes it even longer is that there's water that's possibly in play with the driver. So having to back off driver only makes that second approach shot even longer. I guess the only real saving grace is that the green is pitched from back to front so it can receive a, a, a hybrid or a long iron a little bit better. Uh, so you can get after it that way, but I'll tell you what, with water coming in at 250, depending on the wind, you gotta factor that in and possibly back off of a driver with this tee shot. Yes! Nice. Didn't really move. Listen to this. Derived from its owner, fire is what you may feel if you're not selective with your short approach to this devilish par four. I'm just gonna try to overpower it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh man, that 15th hole is a tough one. You've got marsh that comes in at 250. You've got trees lining the whole left side that can be a whole lot of trouble. And you've got green side bunkers to deal with. So this is the one where you definitely take the advice that it says on the sign for this hole and uh, hit a tee shot that factors in your approach wisely because this is a tricky little hole and we found a lot of little ways you can get in trouble here. Kick out. Kick it, kick it. Give it back. No fade there. Do you know how many people have gone over here? This guy's made a whole coffee table out of all the balls he's collected. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah. you got lucky. I got lucky. I hit something hard. Zach said I floated to the fairway, which has music to my ears. Let's go find it. Absolute miracle kick. Love it. Shot out at like a 90 degree angle. Should be around the 150 mark. Yeah, perfect layup. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I played it that way. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Today's Boy. my day. This guy's got a rabbit's foot in that bag somewhere. <laughs> It's got to be a nine iron here. I don't know, 157. Look at the breeze up there. You see it? See everything blowing? Is it in our face? It's a bit in, into us, yeah. I blow bubbles to see. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh it was so close to being good. Win, Win baby. Give him that bogey save up the hill. <laughs> Tidewater was a golf course I definitely wanted you guys to play. This was the first golf course in America ever named best new public course by Golf Digest and Golf Magazine. It's got nine holes that are playing along either the intercoastal waterway or Cherry Grove Inlet. 
and in particular with those holes that play along the inlet, you'll never forget them. Just bring your camera to the tee, save yourself the time and trouble of having to walk back and get it because people talk about and remember holes 3, 4, 12, and 13 years after they've left Tidewater. Oh, wicked win. Sneaky win, but they should call it too. It says no matter how calm it may seem, you can always bet a warm Zephyr will be blowing in from the marsh. So take aim and good luck. Well, so one less so bub maybe? You fired it at what? 140. 140, I would play at 135. Okay. Tidewater's interesting because you've got a lot of holes that are down by the Cherry Grove Intercoastal and all of those holes are really affected by the wind. It can really change the way you play the holes. Then there's some more holes that are a little further inland. I would say we didn't get a break from the wind the whole time. We were out there, there was always a little bit of wind to factor in, but nothing compared to when you're closer to that intercoastal. So you're gonna get some different wind changes when you're out there. When you're close to that intercoastal, just know there's gonna be a couple of club winds here and there that you gotta look out for. Oh, it's not gonna break down towards the cup, is it? Get in that hole, let's go. Be going in there, boy. 18 was actually a pretty unique closing hole. I'm a big fan of closing holes, if you don't know. I just, I think it's got the most character of any hole on a golf course. I think, I don't know, I'm not a golf course architect, but I got a feeling that they might put a lot of their love into that closing hole. This one was unique because there was a tree right in the middle of the fairway. Uh, kind of reminded me of TPC River Highlands 10th hole. There's a tree right in the middle of the fairway there. Uh, so pretty cool. But the game plan here was if you're left, you're blocked out by that tree. So keep the ball right. I'm going to play the fade. I'm going to try to close this round out strong. I got a little too huggy. Yeah. Got a little too aggressive with this line. We're going to have to make it a three shot hole to the green instead of two. Overall, I love Tidewater. I put it high on the list of uh, the rounds we played this week. Um, not as hard as TPC Myrtle Beach. I would probably put that as the toughest test that we played. That's up there with Caledonia maybe, but um, really love Tidewater. If I'd put it on my list, I'd probably come back. It's a place I would definitely come back to. I just I felt good out there. My whole thinking was, if I aim for it, I couldn't hit it. So what are the chances, right? <laughs> That's my thinking. I love that. Good bogey. Yeah. Peace out, Tidewater. Just one round left in Myrtle Beach. We'll see you in the next one. In the next episode of the Myrtle Beach series. It was almost an eagle there. <laughs> that's just like a, that's a it's seagull. It's like a baby. That's like a seagull. <laughs> oh, nice. Nippy with that spin. Well, this is the risk of trying to drive it because you fly into a greenside bunker like this. Come on, I can't get up this hill. Dig it in. Oh, look, you're up there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I got it out. You got it out. Nice work.